This peaceful village in Iraqi Kurdistan was destroyed twice by Saddam and rebuilt twice by the Kurds who live here. History repeats itself. All parts of Kurdistan have fought to survive under oppressive regimes. Yet, here the Kurds remain, the largest minority in the world, still greatly shaping world politics. I first came to the region as a photographer at the height of the war against ISIS in Iraq and Syria. With portrait photography, you can connect with people on a deep level. You can break the rules of purist journalism, and you can become intertwined in someone else's struggle. It was always a dream of mine to come back and show my photographs in Kurdistan when the war was over. But once ISIS was defeated, Turkey invaded Syria, and the Kurds found themselves with yet another tyrant to fight. This is my friend Ahmed. He's the managing director of Metrography, the first and only photo agency in Iraq. The original co-founder was Ahmed's brother, who was kidnapped by ISIS and after years of searching, is now presumed dead. Uh, when we heard about the book of uh, We Came From Fire of Joey Lawrence, we thought that this is a project that we have to bring it. Because uh, at the meantime, we are demonstrating, we are having protests in our city. We are asking for rights for the people in Rojava. But uh, we thought that if we have this exhibition, there will be more support to Rojava and to the Kurds in Syria and uh, to highlight their the, uh, concerns, their lives, and uh, what's also happening in, in Rojava. With a humanitarian disaster unfolding across the border in Syria and Kurdistan, Ahmed and I knew it was time to organize an exhibition as quickly as possible. Our plan was to fundraise for those displaced by the Turkish invasion, as well as help train Kurdish and Iraqi photographers to continue telling these stories. As photographers, it felt like we all had to get together and do something. So with Metrography, when I was talking with uh, Ahmed about the show, he was saying that, ah, I have a very interesting location for you. And he was showing me stuff from around the prison. And uh, this prison, Amasurika, has a famous history as a torture site by the Saddam uh, regime, where they used to imprison Kurdish and Iraqi civilians in this building. Uh, even as you walk around, you can feel it in the walls, the tension here from the history. Now, on the same walls where they used to torture Kurds, we're displaying portraits of Kurdish fighters. So it sends a very powerful message. These are the Kurds who are resisting a similar dictator. And because of that, the Kurds in all different parts of Kurdistan can start to understand these people in Rojava and what they're struggling against more. Yeah, so this is my first time seeing the prison. We're just walking around and kind of feeling which photos should go in which area, how big we should print, how many photos we can make, where we should put them. Yeah. And we're also coming up with some last minute ideas <laughs> that yeah. will be stressful, but we have time. So I think we should put like the giant panorama of all the gorillas in the in Macmore, you know, the the big group shot. Yeah. Because the color tones of this room is like that photo. Do you know do you know the photo? Uh, yeah, I know, I know this photo. Yeah. We set an unrealistic goal for the exhibition. The clock was ticking. We had just a few days to create all the prints and prepare the gallery space. So we're using a process that I'm not familiar with, but it looks, it looks great, but I've just, I'm used to seeing these prints on every kind of paper, and there's still some weird stuff. But. One of the things I'm struggling with is uh, using very specific printing language terminology in the translation. <laughs> like, the blacks are too crushed, it's too saturated. These words are difficult to translate, but this one is this one's perfect. <laughs> Long live the struggle of our printer. Printer, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Right now we're uh, hanging the big banner on the top floor of the prison and uh, we're just clearing this dirt that's in the way that collected over a long period of time. We're going to have a huge print right here in this window. Joseph, we did it. It looks literally incredible. <laughs> Have a look. Here it is. Oh boy. It looks better than I could have even thought. So usually in this neighborhood, the electricity is fine, but it happens that the day that we have to hurry and print a show so it can be hung tomorrow, it decides to cut out. I'm multitasking. I'm texting, getting the uh, subjects, and also being the light for the guys. <laughs> Okay, so right now all the lights are out, so we're proofing by uh, iPhone light. God loves the blue. Right now we're loading three days of printing. Total of 57 prints for the installation. As you can see, we're being very delicate. <laughs> Right now we're just placing the photos randomly, but then I'm going to solidify the edit and make it more of a story. Each room can have a mini chapter in that story. Well, tomorrow's the opening of the show, and uh, there's no electricity in the building, so we're gonna buy how many of these? <laughs> 41 lamps. <laughs> so. Uh, we need to buy 41 lamps. And, uh, and 20 bones. Maybe return them after? Uh, What's the return policy on this lamp? There's no return. Even if you take this today, you cannot bring it back today. Do, uh, do you need 40 of these for your house? <laughs> it's not a mosque, it's only us. <laughs> well, these are all light bulbs. We have enough light bulbs, but we only have one lamp. So we have one lamp and we have about 40 more to get. <laughs> it's okay, we still have a few hours. <laughs> Okay, so what, what has been the most difficult challenge of uh, this installation? We don't... I don't think there's anything is to be difficult because we love, when you love something, you have to do it. Nothing is hard for us. And everything when we do that job for joy exactly, we gotta do everything for him. Because he deserves it. The world deserves it. Everything deserves to do the best of all. How many volunteers uh, uh, Well, it yeah. depends on the timing. Like right now, we, we are like around uh, seven to eight people working. And at the night, another group was working. So yeah. Why do you think so many people volunteer? Uh, well, because we basically love the show. And also, it means a lot to us. Um, and in this situation, like we want to do anything that we can 
have some effect on the situation right now that's going on. And also, Kurds are have like a huge hospitality in them. So yeah. At the last minute, I became nervous. I wanted the photos to be accepted as an accurate portrayal of the Kurdish struggle. I knew this wasn't going to be a normal photo exhibition. To the Kurds, these images aren't of some faraway land. These fighters are their people. Because I'm a Kurdish girl, when I see those Kurdish fights like uh, beside men and with weapons and they're so strong, it makes me feel like I want to I wanna do the same. <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel like, like I can do it too. Because I've seen so many girls, they were in young age, they should have been being educated, instead they were, they were fighting. Uh, but also I felt a, a sense of pride, because uh, I consider them from my people. So. Fortunately history repeats itself. Uh, today we're not here for anything negative, anything bad. We're here to, I don't know, like an insight into what's happening to Kurds somewhere else around the world, but this place has its own history and this is somewhat a reminder of what that history was and I guess what's happening right now. They've been taken by my next guest, Joey Lawrence, who spent four years travelling to the region all before last month's military offensive by Turkey against the Kurds in northeast Syria. He joins me live from Sulaymaniyah and Joey, welcome here to the programme. You say you're not a war for So right now we're headed away from the exhibition, uh, going north to a place called Badarash Camp. This is an IDP camp where a lot of refugees have come from Rojava and settled, uh, fleeing the Turkish invasion. So we're going to meet some of the people who had to run away from the fighting face to face. أنا مجي لهون مشان أحمي بنتي من هذا الصراع اللي صاير في سوريا وأخاف على بنتي مشان هيك اضطريت يجي لهون إنه وقت صارت الصراع وقت كان عم يدور الحرب حوالينا كان قريب علينا أنا كنت إنه تخيل بنتي يجي قدام عيوني يروح وقت كنا معارك كوباني وقت جت حملة علينا أتذكر بنتي كتير بالمعارك وأخاف عليها إنه شو بدها تصير مصيرة بعد بعد ما يعني يصير لي شيء استشهد أنا شو بده يصير لبنتي مشان هالشي أنا اضطريت إنه طالع بنتي وأحميها بعيد عن السيرة وقتك وصاروختي ما بيجيتك هي ما بيجيت مدني لعسكري يعني ثمانية عسكري قد ما شئت ثمانية مدني تكيك لكن جي وش هيدك تندروش من شيء لكي yeah, so uh, I saw this guy, Horsheed, uh, cutting other people's hair. And yeah, he did a good job, so now it's time for me to get my hair cut. What I see out there is the light starting to look very nice, so I'm like, shit, we should start shooting soon. <laughs> So 
So this is Badarash camp. Uh, it's a place for IDPs. And in the past, all these tents were filled with people uh, who are running away from ISIS. Now, since those people have gone home, the tents have stayed up, and now it's filled with people who are running away from Turkey. Before the, before the Turkish invasion, uh, these people were living in one of the most stable, safest regions of Syria. And now you can see most of these people uh, living in the camp are Kurds from Rojava, displaced from the Turkish invasion. People are coming to me saying that they're very happy that uh, I made this historical documentation of the Kurd struggle against ISIS. But the thing is, is I don't want it to be only a historical document of something that gets destroyed later. I think that this should be a stepping stone or a way forward toward a democratic process in the region. These fighters in Rojava have some very creative ideas, so much so that we wonder who is actually giving the support? Is it the coalition or who is leading the way? Or is it this movement inside Rojava? The coalition supported them, but the real ideas uh, and the real peaceful society came from the Rojava revolution. That's not something that the Americans or any internationals brought. So what I hope is that this book is not something that once was and was destroyed. Instead, this is a historical document of the history that led to something greater.